This is a time we need to ascend. We not only need to press through. Many people want to just put their head on the press through. No. The Lord is saying lift your head and come up hither. Not in pride. Lift your eyes to the hill from which comes your help. Every day you don't get what you've done. He showed you mercy. And it's new every day. And you dare worship anyone but him. And by him I mean Jesus. Lord and Savior, Yahshua HaMashiach, Yahweh, the only living God. Good day, beloved, and thank you for joining me again today on Preach. Be a voice, not an echo. For those of you who do not know me, I'm Ambassador Chantrell Davis. Bring your hearts and minds together and want to call with me in prayer. And we're going to go before the Father and with one heart and one mind. For there is no time and there is no space by way of the Spirit. Heavenly Father, dear God, thank you that we all allowed for such a time as this. Father God, I thank you that I wait because you sustain me. Thank you, Father God, for life, love, liberty, and peace, Father God. Thank you for being holy, tried, and true. You are the rock of ages, the lily of the valley, the ancient of days, Father God, the unparalleled, unprecedented, unchangeable, inexhaustible, all-wise, all-knowing, all-loving, all-sufficient, Father and God. Be exalted and magnified in and through us this day, Father God. Help us that all we do will bring you glory this day, Father God. We yield to your perfect plan, your perfect way, your perfect will, Father God. Father God, awaken in us a pure heart and pure mind that we have pure expression in you this day, Father God. In the name of Jesus Christ, Father God, grant us the spirit of wisdom and revelation and the knowledge of you, that the eyes of our understand and be enlightened, Father God. In the name of Christ Jesus, fill us with the knowledge of your will and all wisdom and spiritual understanding. Help us to walk worthy of you, Lord, unto all pleasing, to be fruitful in every good work and increase in the knowledge of God. Father God, we know that you desire truth in our inward parts, Father God. Awaken truth in our inward parts by way of your spirit, Father God. Forge the character of Christ upon our, our souls, Father God, by way of your fire, Father God. In the name of Jesus Christ, Father God, we apply to appropriate the full armor of God, the helmet of salvation, the breastplate of righteousness, our Lord and God with the gospel of truth, our feet shot with the preparation of the gospel of peace, Father God, in our mouth and in our hand, the sword of the spirit, and above all that, we take our shield of faith, Father God, and above that, we pray without season, Father God, and let it be our earth support at all times, Father God, in the name of Jesus Christ, Father God, I thank you that our word is quickened, Father God, for you have given us power, Father God, for life and death is in the power of tongue, Father God, and we choose to speak right words in due season, and how forcible are these right words, Father God, we thank Thank you, Father God, for the wisdom, Father God, of the Holy Spirit. We have an unction from the Holy One, and we know all things. Thank you, Father God, that by your grace we have a mouth and wisdom that our adversaries can neither gain, say, nor resist. And we speak good things into our life and to the lives of other, Father God, in the name of Jesus Christ, Father God. But we speak death and destruction to all things of the enemy, Father God. Let them be as wood, and all the words we speak, Father God, be as fire, Father God, in the name of Jesus, Father God. Let fire be upon them and all they possess, Father God, in the name of Jesus, for the gates of hell will not prevail against this church, Father God. Father God, away in us, Father God, understanding, Father God, for wisdom is our sister, Father God, and understanding our kinswoman, Father God. Make us a quick understanding that we walk, that we walk in your paths rightly, Father God, for the steps of these good men and women as well as mine are ordered, Father God. And we thank you, Father God, that it is not in us to know our own ways, for your word is a lamp to our feet and a light to our path, Father God. Light it, Father God. We close every door, Father God, before us that you have not opened, Father God, but illuminate, Father God, with your glory and brightness every door that is of yours, Father God. We decree and declare remover of every liar and wait, Father God. Every person that was not sent by way of your spirit in your time and father god let them be removed from our lives father god in the name of jesus let doors be closed before them father god hide us in your holiness and keep us stealth father god for their eyes will not even be laid up on us father god in the name of jesus father god for we would not be gotten off father god in the name of jesus christ father god we purpose to remain with you father god in the name of jesus help us to move in true love father god awaken in us pure spirits father god in the name of jesus help us to see for for Father God, with eyes of mercy, Father God, help us to see people for their present, not for their present state, but for their possibilities in you, Father God. Father, in the name of Jesus, help us, Father God, to win people with the word, Father God, and with love, Father God. For we know you purpose to draw people, Father God by the hope of your goodness rather than the curse of your wrath, Father God. So in the name of Jesus, Father God, that we do speak love, Father God, but we speak your severity too, Father God. Help us to minister and to love in balance, Father God, but help us to be the examples, Father God, not to lord over your inheritance, Father God, but to live by example, Father God, that the ministry of God be not blasphemed, Father God. I decree in Father God that every word that is uttered, muttered, and chanted, any tongue, any language, any realm, through any dimension, and any host against my mind, against this ministry, against our prosperity, Father God, against this outreach, Father God, against those who will hear this word. I command those words, no 
null and void and back into the bosom of the enemy of those who sent them, Father God. Do it according to their own anger. Do it according to their own hatred, Father God. Let them meet the fruit of their own thoughts and intents and their own lips, Father God. Let the snares that they have set to become their own. For surely you deliver us from the snare of the fowl and from the noise and festivals, Father God. We thank you that no weapon formed against us will prosper and every tongue rising against us in judgment. I condemn it right now, Father God. In the name of Christ Jesus, I plead the blood of Jesus and put a firewall up, Father God. Every evil frequency, every evil sound, Father God. Every evil communication of the enemy, Father God. Let the firewall, be, let it be destroyed by the firewall of God, Father God. In the name of Jesus, Father God, purge us, Father God, that we bring forth more fruit, Father God. Chastise us, Father God, and do not let us go the wrong way, Father God. For we desire, Father God, to remain with you and we desire to please you, Father God. We yield, Father God, to your will and your way. For you who have begun this good work in us will continue it into the day of Christ, Father God, from faith to faith and glory to glory. That when we see our Lord and Savior, we will be like him, Father God. In the name of Christ Jesus, I pray and I thank you. And I say amen. And who forgot to cut the thing off again? God is still recording. Okay, let me pause this so I can do this right quick, y'all. <laughs> Gotta love when the screen go black on you in the middle of a prayer. And I had just caught it because the light went off my eyes. <laughs> But uh, I got to remember to reset that because it will turn off on you. But let me leave the room. It, it'll stay lit up and, and, and all of a sudden they don't want to do what they're supposed to do. But I thank you for joining me today. I have a few words. And, you know, we've been praying with people today because this day I'm recording this message is days the tornadoes actually hit a, a, a wide area of Nashville. And, I mean, it really, really destroyed some things. So we keep them in there in our hearts and prayers. You know, we don't have to go forth on what's being judged and what's not. Uh, we know what's going on. But we pray that even in all these things that the goodness and the glory of God will be made manifest and that anything that needs to be corrected and anything he's using to develop in them to trust in the only living God, that we pray that they receive that message um, and that the Lord will protect um, his beloved from the things that will come up on this earth for the Lord for, told us to uh, not be dismayed. It doesn't mean we don't feel compassion, but we are not to be in fear or dismayed as the heathen uh, with the things that will come up on this earth, okay? So keep your grace and your faith uh, in Christ, your Lord, my God, your God. Uh, if you say you serve Christ, you have to trust him. Uh, you don't get to go back and forth. Either you, either you trust him or you don't, okay? Um, this message here, okay? I've already told you that many people will prevent people from coming into their presence that bear a greater light. Which is why sometimes when you go into a sanctuary or you go around other people who fellowship with, they they can start to withdraw because this this light in you is making manifest where they are still dark. It's easy for a baby Christian to stay a baby as long as other people stay baby around him. That's why many people get removed from your life. It's not, it's not always that they're bad people. But when the Lord has required them in the season of developing, temp, developing temperance, in the season of developing spiritual growth and, and, and your temper and your attitude and your gospel, many people didn't allow the Lord to develop that in them. And you continue to grow and they can no longer go with you. Okay? They can't go in, in uh, where you're going. They can't enter the place you're going because in your season you grew, but they chose not to grow. By doing their own thing or whatever it is that they're doing that they didn't allow the Lord to perfect. You have to allow him to perfect the fruit in the season that fruit was to be perfected. Okay? That's why people miss a season and they're going to have to go a whole nother loop. Because you don't get to just keep trying. There's a season when he was trying to develop patience in you because he knew it was coming. There was a season he was trying to develop you and to hold that tongue because he knew it was coming. And, it, and if you messed up in this season, it was going to set you all the way back. There's a season for you to develop, to develop faithfulness in the, in the things of the Lord, in your prayer life, in your body, and working out, in going to church, in serving the Lord. There's a season that he attempts to develop this in you. And then when it does not happen, it will be to the result of you falling somewhere else. Okay? And there's plenty of people who appear to have the light of God until someone who has a, has a greater light comes around. That's why usually people who are all babes like to stay babes together. If they're not growing, they like you to not grow with them. If they go all go eat, you want to fast, they want you to go eat with them. They want to sit on the phone talking about people and gossip, but you want, they want you to go with them. Because if you grow, it will make manifest just how clear and how fleshy that they are. And unfortunately, the church has set up a system to where everybody stays babes in Christ. Why? Because confusion is profitable. Babes are profitable. Okay? They don't ever want you to grow. They always want you to come to them. And anybody that's been following me long enough know. I'll be like, 
Growth is a requirement of the kingdom. Therefore, growth is a requirement of preach your voice not an echo. If you've been following for years, I'm going to expect to see some fruit of that. I'm not going to expect you to be coming to me with the same questions, with the same problems, every little thing troubling you, every little thing making you cry, every little thing shaking you. I'm going to expect better than that. And you're going to know it by, by, by what I say. Okay? The Lord intends for you to grow up. But the church now not only has it succumbed to worldliness, the bell spirit, the world spirit of the world, to where everything in the world, they just bring it into the church and try to sanctify it. Mixing the holy with the profane, causing the abominations that make des that cause desolation to stand in the holy place right now. Because anything that's drawing the attention of God, you get in the glory. And the Lord said, He don't, no flesh shall glory in His presence. That's not just talking about skin. That's everything that we like, everything that you hold dear, everything this world says that is hot, whether it's the music, whether it's the hairstyle, whether it's how nice your shoes are. You've exalted that to where the Lord can't get no glory. You have defiled the altar, or shall I say the pulpit, which is the altar of the sanctuary. But we already know the altar where we lay our body down is in our heart. He needs to smell flesh. That's the sweet savor. He desired a living sacrifice. You didn't decay. You, you don't burn up. You don't consume away. You can sit to, to the tenderly burning flesh and the things of this flesh. But the church, this message that I have for you today, is it, not only is it the system of the world, because this world is designed to cater to weeds and tears. That's why people who say they belong to Christ who are in the church that fit in with this world, look like this world, go where they go. And even the world like even come and hang out with them. The world like coming to the church because there ain't no conviction. They can sit right there. And my grandma used to say she nervous in, a, in church. They comfortable. They can sit right there and ain't no conviction because only the Holy Spirit gives conviction. Conviction. So if there's no conviction, there's no spirit. So even the world like to come in and listen to the gospel music and they say it like it's a jam. That's they jam. That's how they see it. No conviction. It's in the church. And not only has that spirit come in the church, and part of what has come out of that is this message here. And this is a perpetual state of immaturity. It is a perpetual state of babes in Christ. It is a perpetual state of milk. Never entering into meat. And it is, it is the design of the hierarchy. And this is the church of the Nicolaitans. Nicolaitans, Nicolaitans. I hope you said that right. This is the church of the Nicolaitans. And it actually came from Nicholas. And this is actually what's active in quite a few churches today. Where they exalt the piety over the laity. When we know Christ causes us to grow up. And eventually I told you we're going to grow up until you operating in everything. It ain't going to be no more you an apostle, you are this. You go, Jesus operated in all of it. And we're going into sons of God. To the full stature and the measure of Christ. But this uh, church of the Nicolaitans, Nicolaitans, they keep them in a constant state of milk. But why? Because they like to exalt the piety to the level of worship. So they don't ever want the people to grow into their spiritual gifts. For number one, because when you start going to get the spirit, you're going to see who they are. For number one, that's the first reason. Because when the spirit is inflaming you and you start growing, you're going to be sitting there like... Now, you, you're going to stay in order because that's the ways of the Lord. But you're going to be going home talking, Lord, and you know what I'm sensing. Talk to me. And he will. Because you have respect. You didn't be going up there telling the pastor off. And he, no, because you're out of line. Even if they're crooked, you're out of line. But the Lord will begin to show you who they are, and you will get up out of there. And they want your dollars. They want you to help feed the temple of Baal. They want you to help further the ways. Because you, you, when you're in a church like that, you're furthering the works of the enemy. This is the church of the Nicolaitans. Let me tell you the message. Let me give you the title of this message, okay? Dear God, did I hit stop? Nope. Sorry, y'all. <laughs> this church is, I mean, this uh, message is, the spirit of Rome and the way of the Nicolaitans. The mark. This is a mark. This is a mark. When I tell you, it marks you, it marks you on your spirit, on your soul, and it marks you for a particular judgment. It marks you for a demonic attack. It marks you for a, you get the reward of your own hands. You are, you are rewarded unto yourself evil. It marks your spirit for a fall. So this message is the spirit of Rome and the way of the Nicolaitans. The mark of the inevitable fall of a nation. You see this everywhere. 
And why do I say it's the fall of the nation when it's starting the church? Because just as in the Bible and in the olden days, the rulers went to the men of God to see what thus says the Lord so they knew how to rule their kingdom. And that's how it was always supposed to be. The government was supposed to seek to the church for how to live, but it's the other way around. Because they sit at Jezebel's table. They, they love in the things of the world. So now they're coming in line with, it's upside down. They're coming in line with the government and the world and the perverseness and the worldliness rather than being the instructors of the way of living and being. So it's the fall of the nation because the church and the leaders of it have the spirit of the Nicolaitans up on. And it's up on the children. They So they intentionally keep you. Well, they'll give you enough, not really to make you go, just to preach you happy. And they'll never give you or cause you or command that you study. Because they need to keep you obeyed. And by keeping you obeyed, they keep you under control. By keeping you obeyed, they keep you from seeing them. By keeping you in darkness, for they need to enter into the kingdom, nor do they permit you to go in. Okay? If you sitting in your church and you ain't ever been stung to where you left her and had to pray to keep from cussing, you were so hurt, you ain't been cut yet. You got to be cut. The poison's in you worse than the pain of the correction. Rather for you to lose a limb than the, your whole body be cast in the hell. You take the, the temporary pain rather than the permanent, the being permanently without him in hell. Life eternal. Let me get and break this down to lay down what this scripture first before I show you the way they laid out in the Nicolaitan church. They exalt the piety over the laity. So the, the anybody who and, and the people they appoint, they don't appoint the way the Lord tells them to appoint. It's based on who gives the much, what family you came from, what the board says. It has become a corporation. It has become an organization rather than a living organism. The body of Christ. So who they set up is the way the Lord told them to choose. Apostles and prophets. Because the Lord has a way and a order in a holy government of his church. His ecclesia has an order. They cannot be interrupted no matter what people feel. They like to keep the people continually as servants and to never grow. This is the little church of the, and, and, and bring in all the worldliness. And we accept everybody. Let me get into this uh, message. Okay. Romans 8, I mean Romans 2, 5 through 6. Remember therefore from whence thou art fallen and repent. And I'm starting with this for a reason. And do the first works, or else I will come unto thee quickly, and will remove thy candlestick out of its place, except thou repent. But he was speaking, well, I should have went up further, the church he was speaking to, okay? He said, but this thou hast, that, y that you hated the deeds of the Nicolaitans. Hold on, I'm supposed to go, I, I got to, I got to do this for myself. Because I, I'm pretty sure I know which church he's talking about, but I don't want to guess because we need to be being because these churches, uh, this church wasn't found perfect. Okay. Okay. Girl, you put the Romans in there with this S. Okay. For friends, give you repentance. But after the hardness of heart, girl, what did you put? I put Romans in. Y'all don't pay no attention to me right now. <laughs> Okay, nevertheless, somewhat, I have somewhat against thee. Okay, who is he talking to? Sean, you got to get who he talking to. Okay, this is Ephesus. To the angel of the church of Ephesus, okay? He was speaking to Ephesus concerning the Nicolaitans. Even though he said, repent and do your first works. He said, unless I come and remove your candlestick. What he means by that is you'll be preaching with no illumination. The candlestick is the church. We know the candle is the, uh, uh, the angels of the church. When he would take that candlestick away, they would be preaching with no illumination. And then, of course, you would see scattered flock. What do you see now? Flock is scattered and ain't no illumination. What's illumination? Revelation, rain. What did I tell you? No rain, which is rainbow word, equals drought. No drought equals no flow. And your river be dried up, said the Lord. He said, out of your belly flows rivers of living water, but those rivers be dried up. But they have no rain, no rain. Rain continues to flow of a river. And when that rain is gone, you are it continues lack of flow. And when there's lack of flow, there's drought and demons wander in dry places. 
That's why you see all the candidates in the fight and all that in the church. For there's no rain, there's no river, there's no rain of word, there's no illuminated word. So they're preaching with no light, no revelation, and the flock is scattered. Does this look familiar? Let me keep going, okay? He said, but this thou still hast. Thou hatest the deeds of the Nicolaitans, which I also hate. He hates this. A church where they keep people based, they keep you in servant status, they keep you bound literally to where the leaders are lifted to a level of worship. And the Lord said, be not lords over mine herders. They are, you ain't, good, you only got one Lord. They are to shepherd you. And then how do they shepherd you? By examples in order. That means they living it so holy and then they're giving you instructions because they are the example. But he said, you, you don't lord over my inheritance. His inheritance is, is, is his people. You don't lord over them. But in this Nicolaitan church, that's what they do. They keep you babes because if you go, you're going to see who they are. And they can't afford that. They got bills to pay. <laughs> they can't afford to let you see. That light bill high. Let me keep going. Okay. I want you to pay very close attention to this. Because we know the Lord has an order of the church. Okay. The order of the church in the Nicolaitans. And this is really, this is, uh, it's some churches that are set up like this now. Okay. I'm not going to call them out. I'm being right. But you can just take this stuff or type in and you'll be able to Google and you'll see. Okay. They're set up. The church of the Nicolaitans, and these are people that actually operated under this today, and it has infected the church. Evangelists first, they have a president. Know what I tell you? They set up like a corporation or organization rather than a living organism. A vice president, a treasurer, number five, a council of elders, number six, a regional evangelist, number seven. Excuse me, masters, masters, catch that word. Do I have to finish that word for y'all? What did the Lord say? Call no man master. You ain't got but one, and his name is Christ Jesus, Lord, Yahshua Hamashiach. One master, call no man master, but this is the order, okay? Number seven, in their order of the Church of the Nicolaitans, masters of local congregation. Then the deacon, okay? Then number nine. The laity. What do they consider the laity? The people of the church, members who serve the hierarchy. You are put there to serve the hierarchy at all times, and you are never permitted to grow. And the Lord requires you to grow, but he has something for you to do. You have to come into your gifts. He said, don't let no man deceive you and, and deceive you and rob you and disqualify you of your reward by keeping you small. Because they can't afford for you to see who they are. They stand up on your back rather than shepherding you. As Paul said, and he said it's not for you uh, to lay up for the parents, but the parents lay up for you. He said, I would gladly spend and be spent for you. That's a father. That's a spiritual leader. Not devouring widows' houses. Because you got to serve these uh, piety, the leaders, the hierarchy that have been put so high that they got worship. They have been put so high that the glory of God can't even flow like the Uzziah spirit. The glory of God couldn't even flow until he was dead or removed. They've been placed so high and so high above the clouds, all they can preach is sunshine and lollipops. And they can't receive no rain from the Lord. Therefore, it is drought and there is no growth in the church. And not only the church, but the rivers be dried up. No rivers flowing. Okay, let me keep going. You see the order? Now let's, I'm going to go back and forth. I'm going to read this another way. But it's laid out good for me to read it like this, okay? The order of the Lord. And then I'm going to go back over here where I'm supposed to be. Describe the, uh, no, I'm going to wait. No, I'm going to do it and I'm going to come back to it again. The order of God in the church. 1 Corinthians 12, 28 and 31. And God had set in the church, first apostles, secondarily prophets, okay? Thirdly teachers, after that miracles, then gifts, then healings, then governments, 
Okay? Well, I can go all in that. <laughs> Diversity of tongues. Are all apostles? Are all prophets? Are all teachers? Are all workers of miracles? Have all gifts of healing? Do all speak with tongues? Do all interpret? But covet earnestly the best gifts. He said covet the best gifts. But people are open to the dynamics. They want the dynamics. They don't want the gifts. The Lord said gifts. The gifts of the spirit. The fruit of the spirit. That's how you're going to know who Christ is by the end of this. Because the enemy going to do lying signs and wonders. He's going to be calling far down. How you going to know? By way of the spirit and the fruit thereof. Look at their life. You have to know not only the Lord. You have to know his ways and his character. And that's the only way you're going to be able to spot the false. Not by what they do. Because they're going to be doing lying signs and wonders too. So how you going to know? But by way of the spirit. And the gifts of it. The fruit of their life. Is going to tell on them. Just like if you grow. The fruit of your their life. Is going to tell on them. Those who are the church of the Nicolaitans. Okay. First apostles. Secondly prophets. Thirdly teachers. After that miracles. Then gifts of healing. Helps. And that's hospitality. There can be all kinds of things. I go all day because I got a message. Because there's actually a lot more gifts than this. Believe it or not, celibacy, mercy. I got a page. It's a ton of them. Okay. Governments, diversity of tongues. But this is the order he set. And again, the Church of the Nicolaitans, the uh, evangelist first. Hello? The evangelist first. Not the apostles that set up the church and have governmental order. The president, the vice president, the treasurer. The council of elders, the regional evangelists, the masters of the masters of the local congregation. Take me over here, deacons, and then the laity are last because and they keep them there. Not only are the laity last, which is the people, of the congregation, they keep them there. And the Lord says we must move on from the rudiments. And what's the rudiments? And go thereby, come out of the babe, uh, the things of milk, and go into full meat. What's that? When you get saved, I gotta tell you this. The spirit of God, uh, God takes a resident in you. You are still on the rudiments if you stay there. Not everybody speaks in the spirit, but you should desire to. He said he gives them to who asks for him. With the baptism of the Holy Spirit, with the evidence of your heavenly language. How? Because that initial dose that you get when you get saved is not going to be enough to carry you all the way to the end. You got to get refilled and, and, and then the... The Holy Spirit is like a continual plug of refusion and a surge over and over again. A surge over and over again because he is lording over you. That's why you don't just stop at getting saved. When you get saved, he comes into your heart and he's taking up residence. But he has yet to saturate you, to lord over you, to where you bubble over. Out of your belly flows rivers of living water. You are bubbling with that language. Because that's how you're going to get through. You build yourself on your most holy faith, praying in the Holy Ghost. You must grow. The Lord requires it. But not in the church of the Nicolaitans, which most churches are operating in right now today. Whoa. Whoa. Keeping you babes so they can pay their bills. Okay? Anybody who belongs to the Lord knows to sow seed anyway. But they keep you where you don't grow nothing because you can't see who they are. You can't see that they're not telling you the truth. You can't see. That's why they can't ever preach a, preach a message to make you squirm because they can't afford for you to leave. And they can't afford for you to see. And it's an infection. Many of these churches that are big, they look like growth, but it is spread of infection for a little leaven, leaven at the whole lot. The same way with affection in the body. The doctors have to cut it all out of you because if they leave even a little bit, It'll go back it'll, and the body will find a way. It'll mutate and multiply and come back with force. Likewise, infection utterly destroy all the ways of the world. But this world in the church of the Nicolaitans, not only have it mixtured, it mixed the world in. And now the whole ministry in the way of uh, the church of the Nicolaitans is upside down. They've gone their own way. They are no longer illuminated by the spirit of God. The candlestick, the light of the candle, which is his spirit and his glory, is gone. Ichabod, that name, they burn a name. Okay, let me keep going. They keep you babes. So let me go down and see if I've hit these points before. 
the church of the Nicolaitans, they keep members low. You are there to serve, and the hierarchy is almost to the level of worship. Okay? No conviction in scriptures ever. There are two, there are always, the laity people are always to serve and never to grow up into leadership. And you are supposed to grow into where the Lord would have you lead. Okay? They never expect or allow you to grow. They don't even, not only do they don't allow it, they don't even expect you to grow. They want to keep you coming to them. They give you half truths, how the paperwork right there, and they don't just give it to you for you to study. I got a blog on almost every message. I ain't got time to do blogs on everything. But I got a blog on almost all, well, not almost all of them, it'll be 400 or something of them. I, I, I put messages and scriptures everywhere for y'all to study. The Lord don't run out of word. Because it's a, well, I, I'm giving you this revelation, and he got a new mystery. He's giving me from, from the backside, filling me up again. He's too vast. Okay? The laity. These are the people they keep low. They exalt the piety over the laity. Lay people as distinct from the clergy. They make you distinct from the clergy. Ministers, pastors, intercessors. They even consider the pastors laity in a naked lady in the church. Ordinary people as distinct from professionals or experts. Everyone except the clergy is considered laity. Okay? Piety. This is the way the Church of the Nicolaitans is set up, which would be Catholic churches, and there's other churches like them. Okay? The quality of being religious or reverent. Reverent. Devoutness, devotion, piousness, religiousness. Got all the fringes and the big old fish. Religious uh, fish God help. What well, the, 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 the Lord broke down when they sent that statue of that fish God in there with him and he broke them down to nothing. They little crooked staff canes. They fringes and they, they little tassels. Okay? Look real religious. Religion. What they call holiness, godliness, sanctification, because it's piety. But we all are supposed to grow into this, into the fullness of the stature and the full measure of Christ Jesus. So therefore, you have to grow. How much will you look like your Lord when he comes to get you? Saintliness, devotion to God, they don't teach you none of that, because all you're doing is serving. Reverence, they don't teach you that. You just serve. Faith, they sure ain't teaching you none of that. Religious, plenty of that because you're going to do what they tell you. Duty, religious duty, serving them, nothing more. Spirituality, not, not being led by the spirit. Spirituality. You know, everybody's saying, I'm spiritual, I'm spiritual. Demons are spiritual. Witches are spiritual. But what spirit are you of? It ain't the Holy Spirit of God. Understand that this is not the Spirit of God. Sacredness. Religious zeal. You ain't having no zeal because all you do is serving them. Zeal is for the things of the Lord, which is what he called you to do. There may be a time of service as you grow. And even as I grow and I minister, I still will go serve the table. I've done it plenty of times. But you're still operating in the things that the Lord gives you. Fervor, pietism, religiosity, a belief or a point of view that is accepted with unthinking conventional reverence you know they put you in this way and you you can't grow because your growth means their fault the confusion that they create by keeping you babe is profitable to them and they got order set up contrary to the lord and so let me tell you how slick the enemy is he ain't even really got to get you to do nothing crazy once he gets you out of order everything else it, it's gonna bring you nothing but death like he can get the women out of order and over their husband. They can't bring nothing but that. Children out of order. Nothing, but that, that, nothing good can come out of it. No good food can come out of it. Get the church out of order. Nothing good coming out of that church. All you got to do is get you out of order. Out of order. What did I tell you? Out of timing. Time and chance of the Lord. Out of alignment. Out of alignment will lead you to out of order. And when you're out of order, you are in the darkness. And that's where they'll end up. Because you're walking dark. You have no word you're going. Okay? And let me keep going. I'm going to read, Be examples, not lords, over the flock of, flock of God. First Peter. And this is what they're doing. They're lording over them. Not being examples. They're keeping you servants and not being examples. And this is most churches. 
which is why they don't preach no convicting scripture, which is why they don't call no bad out when half of the church choir is pregnant and ain't nobody married. And they throwing baby showers with people having uh, babies out of wear. Like, like you could bring your boyfriend that you've been shacking up with her to the church and nobody feels uncomfortable because you growing up, I mean, your money gone. They got to keep you comfortable in that sin all the way to hell. Okay? 1 Peter 5, 1 through 3. The elders which are among you, I exhort, who am I also, who am also an elder? Paul said, I'm an elder too. Peter said, I'm an elder too. And a witness of the sufferings of Christ and also partaker of the glory. He's witness of the suffering, partakers of the glory that shall be revealed. Feed the flock of God, which is among you, taking the oversight, look over them, not by constraint. And the, and the church of the Nicolaitans is all about restraint and service. You can't do nothing to be restrained and serve them, and that's all you're going to do. That's the level of worship, okay? Not by constraint, but willingly, okay? He's telling you to serve willingly and to grow thereby in the things of the Lord, okay? And, of course, for the flock, for the people to shepherd over you willingly, not like somebody forcing you to, okay? Feed the flock of God which is among you, taking the oversight over uh, thereof, not by constraint, but willingly, not for filthy lucre, for that money, filthy lucre, because it's filthy, but of a ready mind, neither as being lords of God's inheritance, but being examples to the flock. You don't lord over his inheritance because the inheritance is not only the people, but the things. So the inheritance is the gold, the silver, the earth, the Lord, the food, the earth, but we are his heritage. Children, of, children are the heritage of the Lord. We are his heritage. He said, don't you lord over them. Okay? He said, but be examples. Bishops and clergy, they exalt. No correction. Well, you see, there's no correction. Okay? You just serve. They keep you happy in your service. And that again, yeah, that a boy, that and just keep you just agreeing like you just said. You ain't growing. You've been saved 10 years, can't cast out no devil. You ain't got your old front life. You can't help aid and lift another brother and sister up high. Y'all on the same level. You can't even call another sister and brother out in their dirt because you ain't it with them. And that's where the church of the Nicolaitans like to keep you. Just serve us. Just bring us your work. Just bring us your money. Just wait on us hand and foot. Give us worship. Lift us up. These are the kind of people that can't wait to give you their numbers. Call me anytime. Call me all day. They're always available. Y'all know I love y'all. But I ain't going to be on the phone with y'all all day, every day. Grow. Read. Didn't you see that in my message? There's a time when urgency happens if you make yourself available. But it's for every little thing. No. That's somebody that need to keep control of you. They need your, they, they, they need what you give it. They need that worship because you're coming to them. And they need them dollars. You got to grow. The Lord requires it. Okay? They lord over you. They don't want you to grow, but in Christ, we are all, all to develop into the fullness of the stature of Christ, okay? The order of God, I've already read you the order. Again, you already read their order. They got evangelists, president, vice president, treasurer, council of elders, regional evangelists, masters of local congregation, the deacons, then the laity, which will be us, the Pope, Pope, so that we concern. Just wait on us hands and foot. But don't grow. They need you to stay blind because they don't want you to see them. But the order of the Lord is first apostles, secondarily prophets, thirdly teachers. After that miracles, then gifts of healing, then helps, then governments, then diversity of tongues. And it's a lot more vast than that. But the church of the Nicolaitans, why is this important? Because the Lord said, I hate their deeds. And this is the church that came from Nicholas, who once served. Okay. Growth is expected and is required. Until the fullness of the stature and the measure. Ephesians 4, 10 through 5. He that descended into is the same that ascended up far above heaven that he might feel all in all. He went all the hell and back up so he could feel all in all. And he gave some apostles, some prophets, some evangelists. Okay, I read that. Let's go to verse 12. For the perfecting. Why did he give you this? For, for the perfecting of the saints. For the work of the ministry. This is why he gave you these gifts. For the perfecting of the saints, and if nobody's being perfected to go up, what is the what, what is the church of Nicolaitans doing? 
They ain't perfecting you. They're keeping you obeyed. For the perfecting of the saints, for the work of the ministry. They got you doing the work. That's all you're going to do. For the edifying of the body of Christ, you ain't being edified, you're just working. They got you stuck on the work of the ministry. Till we all, till, that's until, we all come to the unity of the faith, till we all come in together, we go up. He said he's going us up into a holy tabernacle, we're going in the one building for him. Okay? To the fullness of the stature, to the fullness of Christ, that we henceforth, verse 14, this is the key, that we henceforth no more be children. Tossed to and fro and carried about with every wind of doctrine by the slight of men. This piety, laity set up of the church of the Nicolaitans is a slight of men. It is a wickedness of men. This is a slight of men. The church of the Nicolaitans is a slight of men to keep you babes because they need your wallet and they need your worship. Yeah, yeah, they need your wallet and they need your worship. And we are to worship no other God. And anything you've said above the Lord, which means even his order and an expectation of you, he expects you to grow. So if you set people above the expectation to grow, then you have made them your God. You'll see how this is just a, it's a thin line. Because the Lord requires you to grow, but they require you to stay a babe and serve. And who you yield your members servant to, that's who, that's who servant you are, your members to, okay? He said, by the slight of men and cunning craftiness, that is craftiness. Whereby they lie and wait to deceive. They have deceived you with this order. They have deceived you keeping you obeyed. When the Lord tells you you must grow. But speaking the truth in love. Speak the truth in love. You may grow up into him. Not up. You growing up into him. Like I want to be with like you when I grow up. You growing up into Christ. Not just inside of him. You growing up to be just like him. You growing up. And you're going to be him again. The word and the flesh. What did I tell you? The, the, Lord, the Lord himself looked at the apostles and said, we know what the word said. That in the beginning there was the word. The word was with God. The word became flesh and dwelt among men. He looked at the apostles and said, the same word that dwell with you and the spirit that is with you shall be in you. So you will the word in the flesh again and again and again. That's why the Lord said, my word will not return unto me void. Not only is Christ the word, you are the word, and you won't return unto him void again. We are the word again and again. We are growing up into him. Catch that both ways, okay? We're growing up into him. We're growing up into him in all things, which is the head, even Christ, okay? They're taking you back to milk. Okay, and this is hindrance. This is backwards, okay? I want you to catch this. Taking them back to milk. This is the church of the Nicolaitans. Taking you back to milk. It is not only it not only hinders your growth, but reverts growth backwards, okay? Hebrews 5 and 12. Okay. For when the time you ought to be teachers, you should be teaching by now. You have need that one teach you again, which be the first principles of the oracles of God. And you are, he said, you are become. That means you didn't start out this way. You've begun in the spirit. Now you have become such as need of milk and not of strong meat. What's that? You become that again. You back off the thing of the spirit and you're, you're, you're doing the rudiment things again. You need milk all over again. He said you have become. That means you went backwards. This church of Nic Nicolaitans is making you go backwards in your walk with Christ. You're not getting brighter, brighter till you reach the full light of day. You are becoming darker and darker, more confused, more deceived until you fall away. It's coming. Okay? The Nicolaitans are the followers. I'm a, just a little uh, FYI for your understanding. The Nicolaitans are the followers of that Nicholas. The same Nicholas, who was one of the seven first ordained to uh, uh, deaconate by the apostles. They, they, they led lives. They led lives. This is why the Lord hated them. They led lives of unrestrained indulgence. What do you see in the church now? Serve us. Just bring it all in. Do what you want. We don't care if you have babies out of wedlock. We don't care that just your boyfriend and your second or third baby daddy sitting next to you. We don't care that you got five kids they never had no husband. We don't care that the whole crowd does singing is pregnant. We don't care if the church mother is mean and then the junkyard dog. Just do what you want. Just serve us. Unrestrained indulgence. 
Yeah. And I'm going to read you a couple. Nicholas is found in Acts. I'm going to put this in the blog. Acts, and you can read up on the more. Acts 6, verse 12. It is connected to the spirit of Balaam, the same spirit that was up on Nicholas. Oh, don't get me started there. It, it, the enemy, what the, what the enemy has done by bringing this doctrine into the church is who the Lord has blessed cannot be cursed. It's the same error. He said you ran after the error of Balaam, thinking you could curse what God has blessed. You can't be cursed. But what he can do is make you damn yourself. What is a damn? Stop. That's a curse. Because a curse ain't nothing but an empowerment to fail. You're damned. Because the Lord is always good. But he said your sins separate you from you. Your sins separate my goodness from you. So they have to get you to touch the things of the enemy and be perverted. And you are stopped by the perverseness. You are stopped by your wrong way of living. You are stopped because you have been reverted back to the natural things rather than the things of the spirit. You are stopped because you are being held low and not permitted to enter into the kingdom. Though that piety don't go in either. Okay? So, Nicholas is found in Acts, 8, uh, Acts 6 verse 5, connected to the spirit of Balaam that is in Numbers 22, uh, uh, Numbers 22 verse 24, connected to Jezebel, okay? Same spirit over and over again. Nothing new under the sun. What once was will be. Just like the, the, the wicked magicians threw down and uh, the, uh, the rod turned into the snake just like Moses and you have to know by the spirit who, who is God. Connected to Jezebel in 2 Kings 9 uh, through 10. Okay. Uh, to the uh, 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 Ephesians of Greece, the, Epicurus, the Epicure, <laughs> Epicureans of Greece in Acts, Acts 17 verse 18. Okay. This is the mark of an inevitable fall of a nation. Because the nation was supposed to be led by the church. And the church is only the result of what's in the homes. So the nation is falling and marked for this fall. The church of the Nicolaitans is up on the whole body. Therefore, it is in the houses. Because the houses have brought it into the church. And the church would is made to set it in order. Now, you can come into church with all your mess. But when the church is in order, that pastor go, go that the word going to get that all out of you. But that's not what's happening. They need you to serve. They need to keep you wounded. And blind because they got bills to pay. Okay? Inevitable. The inevitable fall. The definition of inevitable. An unavoidable event. This is not only as individuals, but as a church and a nation as a whole. Okay? A variable occurring or a, 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 a variable occurring or appearing. Certain, it is certain to happen. It means it is unavoidable. It means it is in escapable there's no escape the only way you can escape is by repentance it is bound to happen it is sure to happen it is inexor inexorable that means nobody can absorb this for you you're gonna get hit by the lord unpreventable assured he said assured that it would happen it is certain it is for sure it is predestined catch that inevitable predetermined preordained that means that when this judgment go out, it was predestined, preordained, because the Lord already knew every decision he was going to make. So according to his foreknowledge, it was predestined. In, oh Lord, in, ineluctable, inelectable, composurary, required. That It is required to happen. When you're living this way, a fall is required. It is obligated. It is mandatory. It is mandated. It is prescribed and ineludible. You can't elude it. The judgment of the Lord is coming. And this judgment is up on the church that has the spirit of Rome and moves in the way of the Nicolaitans. This is the word of the Lord. The mark of the inevitable fall of the nation. This is the spirit that the church is moving up in. And it is keeping you babes. And it's keeping you serving. And you're just so happy. Because in your heart, I'm just pleasing the Lord. But if you were studying that Bible on your own, excuse me, you would know growth is a requirement. And a, a pastor will require you to study that Bible. He can't make you at home. But he will sure know that you wasn't growing and be on you. And so rather than catch it from the pastor, you'd be at home studying. But the church of the Nicolaitans can't afford that. 
They need you to stay obeyed. They need you to keep coming to them. So they not only need your worship, but they need your wallet. They need you to lift them up. Pastor, 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 help me, help me, help me. You got, you got to answer, got to answer. What, what, what? Rather than you going to that word, go pray and wait a while and tell me what you, what you, what you even believe the Lord said. They don't even make you begin to exercise your faith. They need your worship, lift them up, and they need your wallet. So they're going to keep you a babe all the way to hell. Because the Lord will not excuse you for not growing either. Because you should be studying that Bible. And I'm telling you, this is the spirit that has an effect at the church. For the spirit of Rome is the spirit of worldliness. It is the spirit of Egypt. Anything goes, bring it all in. Tolerance and the way of the Nicolaitans. Keep them as babes so they can serve us and bring us their money. Keep us as babes. Keep them as babes so they can worship and continue to spread out their wallet. And you are aiding in the synagogue of Satan. Beloved, it's not acceptable. It's an inevitable fall of the nation because the church is what's judged first. He said judgment begins with the household of God and it is an inevitable fall of the nation because the church and the world has become one. Take this message before the Lord. The word is from the Lord, the church of the Nicolaitans. And he said, whose deeds I hate, the spirit of Rome, and the church of the Nicolaitans. Upside down order. Upside down and revert. You have subverted. That's the word. Subverted. Those who once believed by the spirit. So you reverted back. And your state will be worse than what it was. Because you begun in the spirit. How are you going to be made perfect by the flesh? Grace be with you beloved. Take this message before the Lord. I love you all. So into the good ground of preach be a voice, not an echo, yet only as you have purposed in your heart. For God loves a cheerful giver. The truth, the tr of the word of God. Word of God. First Corinthians 9 11 reads, if we have sown into your spiritual things, is it a great thing if we shall reap your carnal things? Give only with purpose and cheer, for we desire fruit that will abound towards your account. We thank you for all of your support, seed of your time, seed of your prayers, and the purpose seed of your gifts. To give, visit our YouTube channel and click on the PayPal logo or go directly to PayPal using the following links or email preachbvne at yahoo.com. To listen to more messages and for the latest updates and offers, visit www.preachbvne.webs.com. Also view messages on the YouTube channel at www.youtube.com slash C slash preach be a voice not an echo ministry. Also like us on Facebook and follow us on Twitter. Do the work of an evangelist. Watch it, then share it. Beloved, we wish above all things that you will prosper and be in good health, even as your soul prospers. Grace be with you. Thank you for joining us today on Preach, Be a Voice, Not an Echo. We pray that you were encouraged and empowered by today's message. Until next time, we encourage you to hang on to God's unchanging hand and preach. Grace be with you.